Welcome aboard. It is Election Day, and this is Barnes to Bull Today for Tuesday, November 4th. I'm Mark Mumford. Dinghies are our top topic today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kevin Friel. Dinghies may not seem to be very threatening. However, they are a source of some concern for the town's waterways committee. The committee believes there are too many dinghies dotting the Barnstable coastline in some key areas. At the Waterways Committee's latest meeting, the dinghy situation sparked some deep discussion. And this is in its infancy, and that's why they're looking at just one, doing this at one, you know, one landing first to see if this is the right way to go, to see whether it's permitting or, or there's so many different ways that we could go. It's uh, it's just kind of gotten to the extent where it's 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 gone a little too far, and there's. People that are um, just left their stuff there. Just, you can't tell sometimes what's good or bad. I believe that once this goes through in a trial period, that would then encompass the, the rest of the town. And a lot of it's a uh, you know, funding mechanism, whether it's signage to, to disposal. I mean, the uh, the landfill won't take fiberglass boats, so that means that it has to go to the uh, to the uh, commercial yard there. I believe in Bourne's the only place that's left now. So. Uh, as well as having personnel to go down and take care of them. So we're just trying to bite off but what, hopefully what we can show. What I'm wondering is, is the issue that there's abandoned boats down there that no, but, and there's no way to legally say, you know, because you could take someone's boat that's using it. It may just look like a piece of crap, but it may actually be functional. Right. So is it just to purge the areas of dinghies, or is it, is it do you think it's a, is someone created or brought up an issue that they don't like seeing dinghies down there in the winter? Uh, I, I, think think they, right? I think it's both. I mean, it's I think it's both. winter and summer, actually. I mean, I think one of the well, yeah, I know that one of the concerns <laughs> I get from be hearing from people is that there's so many dinghies right. down there that it's uh, right. uh, it's hard to even move around. And, and, and one of the, you know, if you're intermixing abandoned dinghies that haven't been cleaned out, maybe the summer, the winter time is the is the better time. Sure. At least the winnow yeah. <laughs> the area of those dinghies. Just to clear out space, and then um, and then we can and then they can take it from you know, dealing with the summer level. But I, that, that's just what I the scuttle. But I've been getting on. I, don't know I mean, the reason I'm asking because it seems like if the idea is look, we just need to clean up the beach, but we can't clean it up because we can't tell is this someone's dinghy or is this a bandit? That maybe it's just like a it could be like a one time event, you know, once every two years or once a year when. Yeah, but you so, don't know when you go down the beach and look at a dinghy if it's... Exactly, that's what I'm saying, though. Is how are you going to find out who, who, who owns it? And you get that. I mean, we're going to go forth from this time and place that the next week we're cleaning the dinghies out. Right. Well, I, that's, but I don't that's, think that's going to be helpful for so the guy who, listened, who wasn't listening. Right, <laughs> but it's not really lost this thing. It's not going to be... You know, you know what, what I'm thinking about is someone abandons a boat. Does it become the town's responsibility to remove the boat at our expense, you know, taxpayer expense, or maybe is there a system to identify, identify the dinghies from the beginning no. so that, oh. you know, so while you're, boat, while you're using your boat, if you decide you want to abandon it, then that, that's going to cost you too. There is a public hearing coming up on the dinghy situation. It's scheduled for the town hall hearing room at 1 o'clock on Thursday the 13th. Meanwhile, this is a time of year when things heat up over at the Barnstable Senior Center. In addition to her duties over at the center, Senior Services Director Madeline T Taylor hosts her own talk show here on Channel 18. Here's a clip from the latest episode of Senior Compass, featuring guest Robert Burke, President of the Barnstable Council on Aging, and Leon Michael Love, President of the Friends of the Barnstable Council on Aging. As far as um, you know, what, what the purpose of your board is, you're really an advisory board. So y you know, your mission is sort of to ad identify and address the needs of seniors right. 60 and over in Barnstable, right. but also through your monthly meetings and through the various committees, which we can talk a little bit about as well. It's really to um, advise us on how what our priorities we should set um, for senior services as a whole. And it's great to have, um, you know, such a membership that's great because our meetings are very, very well attended. You have, as you said, 13 members and all those spaces are full right now. Um, and we have an alternate position and we have two associate positions, one of which is filled and one right. is open. Um, but what I really admire about the Council on Aging is their commitment because we see frequent attendance at our monthly meetings and there's always a lot 
obviously to discuss, especially with regards to outreach to seniors in our town, which is one of our greatest challenges, as you know. Right. What do you find are some of the other challenges that we face as a community that the Council on Aging can address? Well, the Council on Aging has basically determined that uh, education of the public, you know, the, of people that may think they need services, where do they go, uh, transportation of the elderly is a big problem. A lot of them do not have access to a private vehicle, mm -hmm. can't get a ride, or they're in a situation where they no longer can drive. And fiscal, fiscal problems. Now, fiscal problems could be uh, needing help uh, with food, like getting food stamps or getting to a food pantry, or uh, perhaps even a real estate tax abatement, th things that are monetary. People that retired, particularly if they're just on Social Security, in the last 10 years are now finding that their Social Security check is not covering their necessary expenses. People are having to make a determination, do I heat my uh, house, do I buy prescription drugs, or do I eat? And these are serious problems, and they're really not problems that uh, town government can really solve. Mm -hmm. So you, you need to get involved, find these people, and see if we can get them to uh, get them some help of some type. And it's just very interesting because we actually just came from a Council on Aging meeting yes. right before we're taping the show, right. and um, our outreach specialist, Claudia Borden, actually gave a presentation to the Council on Aging right. this morning, and she really talked about the, the state of things as they are right now for seniors in our community and how much more difficult um, the cases that she is dealing with and the caseload that she has. And we know that we're limited in the services that we can provide just because right. of, um, you know, we only have two outreach workers and we know right. that because the, the demographic is changing so much. But she gave us some really eye-opening facts and figures about um, how much time is consumed as far as meeting with clients. And just the increase in requests that they're getting now because of the economy, that they're having mm -hmm. so much more um, calls about financial issues than they have in the past. And I think that's really our greatest challenge because we know demographically what the numbers are right now. And I know that you've had some conversations regionally with mm -hmm. some of your counterparts in other towns and also with the county. Do you want to maybe talk a little bit about some of that? Yeah, what we originally did is we went up to see a gentleman called Warren Smith who does the uh, demographic studies for all of Barnstable Council. Uh, county, and he uh, uh, gave me an awful lot of information on the growth in the seniors and the age, uh, the percentage of the population, and if you were looking at it like a tidal wave, that's what it is. It's very, very scary. Uh, we still have limited resources in this town. Uh, so we decided after looking at all the information that we really better start gearing up. Check out the Channel 18 schedule at the town's website to see when you can catch Senior Compass. Meanwhile, you still have time to cast your ballots with the polls closing at 8 o'clock. And once the polls close, you can tune in to Town Manager John Klim, providing expert analysis and commentary on both radio and TV. He will be News Director Matt Pitta's special guest at WXTK News Radio, and that election coverage will also be simulcast on Community TV Channel 17 as well. As far as the weather outlook is concerned, plenty of clouds and comfortable temperatures in our immediate future. Tonight, mostly cloudy with lows in the 50s. Then tomorrow, cloudy with some patchy fog thrown in in the a.m. Winds gusting out of the east to about 25 miles per hour tomorrow afternoon and highs right around 60. No meetings on the agenda here in town this evening, but tomorrow evening, a busy schedule featuring the Charter Commission at 7 in the hearing room, the Highness Main Street Waterfront Historic District Committee at 7 in the School Administration Building, and also at 7, a joint meeting with the Town Council and the School Committee in the Selectman's Conference Room. At that session, the focus is selecting a placement on the school committee for former member Peggy Dandridge, who's stepped down as she's moving out of state. That choice to be made from a field of eight individuals. And just a heads up for Thursday, the town's No Place for Hate Committee is producing a forum on immigration over at Cape Cod Community College, running from 6 until 8 in the evening. Among the speakers, Cape and Islands District Attorney Michael O'Keefe. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Kevin Friel. We'll meet you right back here tomorrow. I'm Mark Mumford.